am Padma Rao, or should I say Guten Tag, Guten Abend? And hi, I'm Archit Deshadri, and I will not attempt any German just yet. We're right outside the German embassy, and we're here to get you all the latest about the German elections. Booths will close at 6 p.m., and we're soon going to know who the next German chancellor is. We're going to be talking to guests here and talk about the international issues, the domestic issues, and how India may be impacted by the next German chancellor. For the next two and a half hours, we're going to get you all that there is to be covered about the German elections live from the German embassy in New Delhi. Continuous coverage only on We. Keep watching. Gravitas, in association with TBS Jupiter. It's a big day in Germany. Polling is underway in an election that is being watched closely, not just within the European Union, but across the world. Early numbers hint at a surge in the voter turnout until last count, 41% turnout. But who will benefit from the rise is anyone's guess at the moment. German Chancellor Angela Merkel cast her vote a few hours ago. Most surveys give her an edge, but there is a twist in this plot. The alternative for Germany party, the AFD as they call themselves in German, Far right and its ideology is projected to make a dent in these elections. Some polls even say that they could get the third place. And this would complicate matters for Angela Merkel, who would need to do some serious number crunching for her return to the chancellery. Now, Germany is the largest country in the European Union today and has remained a strong economic force even when the rest of the world dealt with crises. Let's just look at the numbers. A case in point here is the unemployment rate, 5.5% today in Germany compared to the Eurozone average of 9.1% and the incumbent has promised to bring it down to 3%. More than 80 million people reside in this country as per the latest figures. Out of these, 60 million citizens are eligible to vote. Many of them have already cast their vote. Others will do so in the hours ahead. Germany has an even population size, which basically means that there are 31 million males, 30 million female voters. And what are these people voting for today? What are the biggest issues in this election? The high immigration and refugee numbers, for one, have upset many Germans and are on top of their minds as they go ahead and cast their vote. Allowing these refugees into Germany in 2015 was a gamble for Angela Merkel, something that became the foundation for the rise of the far-right far party, the alternative for Germany. The second big issue is the economy. While Germany has fared better than most others, there's a slowdown for sure, and it has widened the gap between the rich and the poor. Brexit and Trump's win are symptomatic of the general shift to the right in the West. The rise of the ultra-right party reflects the same trend in Germany as well. It's the first time since Hitler that the ultra-nationalists will be elected to the German parliament. Workplace inequality for women is a major issue for the Germans. Many hope that Angela Merkel will take corrective measures as soon as she returns to office. The vote in favor of Brexit and President Trump's firm attacks on the transatlantic alliance are two issues that the new chancellor will have to navigate with care. There's a lot to talk about and with us in the studio, former ambassador, former Indian ambassador to Germany, uh, Gurjeet Singh is with us. Uh, we'll also be joined by Daniel Dylan Bjomer. He's a foreign uh, editor at the Foreign Desk, uh, joining us from Berlin. Good evening to both of you. And uh, let me come to you, Daniel, first. Uh, what is it looking like on the ground? 41% uh, turnout, is it good or bad? Well, it's not as good as some people would have expected, because obviously these elections are historic in uh, at least two senses. One is that Angela Merkel would have a record of uh, re-elections as a chancellor here, and she is really uh, on the way of becoming a towering figure in German post-war history and in European history. And also, as you rightly said, um, the first time that um, ultra-nationalist right-wing party will be represented in the 
the parliament here. That, of course, is basically the biggest topic for Germans. And some people would have thought that more people would come to the ballots. What that means for the outcome will to be seen. In your time, I'm sure you've seen some elections in Germany. What is it like? Just uh, because as far as Indians are concerned, they're, they're very excited about elections and politics. Is that same charged up at atmosphere? Is that something that you see in Germany for our viewers across the world? Just give us Not a really. The Germans are very calm and comforting people and they like their elections to be so. Okay. For instance, today there was the Berlin Marathon going on while people were going to vote. So this shows the level of normal day mm. in elections. And I saw some state elections in my time. Mm. I think they were all very calm. Nothing would untoward would happen and they would just go vote and come back. Mm. But I think what our friend from Germany is saying that the turnout is not as high as we anticipated. Mm. So what impact will this have, particularly on the new parties trying to enter parliament? Hmm. Normally, a higher turnout means a lesser vote for the incumbent parties hmm. and more for the fringes. We have to wait and watch how this really pans out and will what the polls say hold or will there will be a little bit of a touch The Germans of, have a fairly good record. They have the, a good the, record the poll, of, be, of doing what predict, they say. Yes, the yes. pollsters predict it more or less correctly. So I would Angela agree. Merkel can be, yes. can be assured of, uh, of being... Uh, Coming on top, I don't know with what numbers. Uh, Daniel, what is this election about for the voter? What does the German voter care for the most as he or she goes out to vote? Well, I think that's a very interesting question because if you look at the economic fundamentals, Germany is doing really well. People here are just amidst uh, a sea of unemployment and um, government debt that we're seeing around us in Europe. We're doing very well. Growth is um, at a steady pace here. Um, unemployment is going down. <laughs> and so is the network, uh, I, I, clearly. Uh, let me put this question to Ambassador Singh. Uh, what do you think Germans are going out and to, to vote for today? What is the biggest I issue according to you? I think you rightly pointed out the main issues in your capsule. Now, the Germans want a steady hand on the ship. Mm. They don't want too much of turmoil because Europe has been through it and the transatlantic alliance is also showing signs of turmoil. Mm. So therefore they think Mother Merkel is the best person for the job right now, perhaps not with the same coalition partners. Interesting you said the hand. There was a poster with the hand, I believe, mm. that, that showed her steady hand. Uh, yes. Daniel, I'm told you're back with us. Uh, you were talking about what this election is about and what, what the voter really cares for in Germany today. Yes, I can take the cue from the ambassador um, right away there. Uh, it is about the steady hand of Angela Merkel base versus the fears uh, in some parts of the population that connect to migration and the influx of refugees that cannot be um, explained uh, completely if you look um, at the sober numbers. Um, there has been an influx of 800,000 refugees here in 2015. Since then, the influx of refugees has diminished. But there is a part of the population who feels that with these refugees came a danger of Islamization and came a rise in crime and in violent crime, none of which so far can be substantiated if you look at the reality. If you ask me, I think this election is really about the psychology of the change that is going through Europe at the moment. We are seeing economic um, upheavals and economic changes, and a lot of Germans, same as the French who have voted in, uh, for extreme right parties um, in such large numbers, are afraid of what the future will bring, and they think that a return to their own identity and to their traditional forms of society will be the redemption. Right. Uh, my colleague Archit Shishadri is at uh, the German embassy in New Delhi. Archit, what's the buzz on the ground? Are people excited as, as voting is underway in Germany? Okay, I'm told we'll go back to Archit uh, uh, in, in just a bit. But let's explain to our viewers what, what this election is like. Uh, the world has for long poked fun at the Germans for the many complicated elements of their lives, their language, their literature, their worldview. And going by that measure, here's another, the country's electoral system. It's pretty complicated. Senior foreign editor Padma Rao breaks it down for you. It's a big Sunday in Germany. What's happening? 
election of Germany's 19th Bundestag or its parliament and when the polling booths are going to be open from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday the 24th of September and how many voters well the eligible voters total about 61.5 million and that's down by 400,000 since 2013 and how many seats there's a total of 598 seats, 299 earmarked for the districts and the rest for political parties. And why do the Germans have two votes each? The first vote is to choose a district candidate. The second is to choose a political party. And must the two votes go to the same party? No. And what does it take to make it to German parliament? The parties must win at least three district votes, known as the first vote, or at least 5% of the overall second vote. And what happens next? 299 candidates with the maximum district votes will enter parliament directly, while parties will receive seats proportionate to their win percentage. For example, if a party wins 50% of the total number of votes cast, then it gets 50% of 299 seats. And what's an overhang? If a party wins 110 district seats and 100 proportionate victory seats, as an example, it gets a total of 110 seats. But what about the others? Other parties get levelling seats. In this case, each an additional 10% of their victory percentage. And what's unique? That the German parliament can be larger or smaller than 598 seats given the overhang and the levelling. Padma Rao, Vion. And let's talk about poll booth manners. Interestingly, the Germans have that too. Who could be more rigorous than the impeccably correct nation of Germany? Election officials are undecided about allowing small kids into poll booths. But unlike in our part of the world, you, can't, you can take your cell phone with you. But do watch out. If you think that you can take a selfie and post it on social media, forget about it. Your vote will get cancelled. There's harsher punishment for other violators. Do not even think about taking a picture of your voting slip and letting the world know about it. They may see how you voted, but you won't. From your prison cell, where you may land up for two years. Well, interesting country and we're trying to uh, bring you the flavor of what it's like uh, to be in Germany on voting day and we're also introducing you to the big names, this big election, the biggest in the European, uh, in a European country and the world as we've been saying is watching Germany uh, goes to polls every four years and it will be electing a new parliament today. In all likelihood its existing Chancellor Angela Merkel will be back at the helm for a record fourth term. But who are the other candidates vying for Berlin's top job? Here's a report. It'll be a coalition, that's for sure. And with the kind of black tower Chancellor Angela Merkel's CDU-CSU ruling combined can boast of on this graphic, it's near certain that the charismatic Iron Lady of Germany will be sworn in Chancellor for a record fourth term. But who are the other candidates vying for the position? Let's take a look. Chancellor Angela Merkel's Christian Democratic Union CDU is represented in all states or lender of Germany except one. It rules Germany in a combined with its cousin party, the Christian Social Union, which is present only in the southern free state of Bavaria. And the parties are in a grand coalition with their big rival, the Social Democrat Party, at the center. Consequently, the CDU-CSU Union, as it is referred to, has two candidates for Chancellor, Angela Merkel of the CDU and Joachim Herrmann of the CSU. The SPD's candidate for Chancellor is Martin Schulz. The 62-year-old bookseller joined the Social Democrats at the age of 19. After triumphing over alcoholism, he put in a stint as a mayor and was later elected to the European Parliament, where he first represented the SPD for eight years and stayed on for another five as the president of the EP. Martin Schulz speaks five European languages and is an avowed supporter of the European Union.
Christian Lindner, he's the young hip face of a party that was ignominiously shunted out of parliament at the last election. The Free Democrats, and with a catchy new campaign and a candidate to match, the FTP is not only expected to make the 5% hurdle this time, but may even find itself in a coalition with Chancellor Merkel's CDU. Lindner is 38 and a graduate of political science who more than knows how to work the media. He's married to the deputy editor-in-chief of Europe's largest daily. The Greens of both erstwhile East and West Germany come together in this coalition. In environment-conscious Germany, the party will make it into parliament but will remain for a lack of enterprise and new ideas at the bottom of the heap. And like with other twin groups, there are two aspirants for the Chancellor's post. There's Katrin Göring Eckhard, a theologist, and there's Sem Özdemir, a teacher of Turkish origin who joined the Greens at 16 and became a German citizen at age 18. Theirs will be the most controversial debut of all, but enter the parliament they will, beating all smaller parties, some say even the FDP. Right-wing Alternative für Deutschland, Alternative for Germany, will be fielding 77-year-old lawyer Alexander Gauland and the young and outspoken Alice Weidel. It is no coincidence that both right-wingers are from former East Germany, where a distrust of foreigners, specifically Muslims, runs high and where the AFD enjoys its strongest support base. And finally, the left. The German economy is on the upswing. Exports are booming. Unemployment is down. There are other problems, of course, but surveys still show that Germany seems in no mood for socialism right now. The twin outfit comprising of former East and West German leftists are expected to make it to Parliament, but will languish right at the bottom. Their candidates are former social scientist Dietmar Barsch and the erudite graduate of literature Zara Wagenknecht. Padma Rao, beyond. And we have our guest with us, uh, uh, Daniel. I've, I tried an experiment of sorts over the past week, and I asked people to name four top politicians in Germany, and uh, the best ones could name two, maybe. Uh, Angela Merkel is, is larger than life outside Germany, of course, but uh, how, how do our competitors compare in Germany? Well, I think um, it's... Um, of course, people here know other faces as well, but um, she is really the central figure here. Um, and what is interesting in that is that um, talking about the charismatic figure that Padma Rao has just mentioned that Angela Merkel is now, that hasn't always been the case. For most of her career, Angela Merkel um, was known even among German politicians who are, as the ambassador said, uh, rather sober. She was known to be particularly sober, particularly boring, particularly not seeking the limelight and not making a show. And in a way, Germans have come to like that in particular. And I think in that way, she is really a phenomenon. Um, Martin Schulz uh, is rather a tragic figure. Her, the man who should be her main opponent, the um, social democrat, he was very, very popular when he was still the president of the European Parliament. And he um, was, in a way, the helmsman for uh, Germany's belief in the future of European integration integration, but he hasn't used that in his campaign. He has tried to present himself as a man from the people, which he really is, um, but that hasn't brought in victory uh, whatsoever. His party um, is very, very likely to be slashed in these elections in a historic dimension. And um, Christian Lindner, the liberal who has a good chance to be um, in the next government as a minor um, coalition partner, 38 years, very interesting, um, has turned around the fate of his party. And just to um, say one more sentence about Elisa Weidel, the um, candidate from the extreme extreme right um, AFD party. What is interesting in her is that she in some ways 
counters the image that this um, extreme right party has acquired. She is a woman, so um, but not only as being a woman at the top, um, but she's also um, uh, an open lesbian who is married to a woman um, from Sri Lanka, for that matter, so to an immigrant, actually. And um, she comes from the banking sector. And this is rather remarkable for a party that is so critical of big finance mm. um, and of the European um, integration in that matter. Right. I can tell our viewers that uh, they just saw those live images from Germany. And uh, Ambassador Singh, uh, you just told me that you, you, you left office in Germany only in April and you have some of your friends who are contesting. Uh, have you spoken to them lately? <laughs> what, do they, what do they think about their chances against uh, Ms. Merkel and, and, and her party? Well, I think uh, most of my friends were people who won the election on their own in the districts. Okay. They were not the proportional uh, winners. Proportional winners have to wait for the party to decide who will be. Having said that, I, just to follow up what our colleague from Germany was saying, mm. I think it's very important that the, if you leave the two big parties out, the other parties all have young leaders, which is quite different. Secondly, not only the leader of the AFD, but there are two other people, the lady who also leads the left and the gentleman who today leads the Greens, who is a total son of immigrants, and the lady who leads the left is half Iranian. So now this makes an impact that while you see a trend that immigrants are not welcome, hmm. you actually see people of immigrant origin playing a bigger role in German politics. This shows how accommodating Germany really is, whatever the propaganda may be. But the fact is that the SPD and the, C and the CDU have been in power so long together that mm. it opens up space for the fringes. Now, how much the fringe can take over is, the, is what the election to me is all about today. Absolutely. I'm told Padma Rao, uh, my senior colleague, is also with us uh, from uh, the Indian embassy in, uh, the, the German embassy rather, in New Delhi, along with Archit. Uh, uh, Padma, we're talking about uh, who is the favorite to win this election. Most polls, of course, saying it's Angela Merkel, but who are the people at the embassy putting their money on? All right, Palki, I'll take that question. Uh, the question to you, uh, uh, Padma, there was, uh, who are people here at the embassy uh, putting their money on? I mean, is it hands down Merkel, which is sort of the vibe that we've been getting for the last uh, few hours since I've been here? Nobody's putting their money on anything right now because it's too close a call. Uh, the CDU-CSU union are uh, down from the expected 37% to about 32%. Mind you, those are the poll projections. Uh, the results have not come out yet. They're due any minute now. The first uh, you know, counting must have begun a long time ago, so we will be getting some concrete results uh, very shortly. Uh, one thing is for certain, as we've been saying, indeed, Vion has been saying this for several days, that the right-wing uh, alternative if you Deutschland is going to get into Parliament with a substantial uh, number or a percentage uh, the, perhaps even more than was originally expected and as for the FTP the FTP is also going to be returning to Parliament those are the free Democrats and it looks like it looks very likely that if there is a coalition it will uh, between two big parties then it will be between Chancellor Angela Merkel CDU CSU Union and the FTP the free Democrats and Palki, just to give you guys perspective, for the last few hours we've been here at the embassy in New Delhi, and I mean, it's a huge crowd here. A lot of people have come here, uh, Germans, uh, Germans who've settled in India, many Indians, uh, really closely watching the television screen. In fact, there was a, a panel discussion a short while ago with some journalists as well as some India German experts, and they really sort of compared this election to the U.S., the British, and the French election, saying compared to those, this was relatively quiet, relatively business as usual, and rather boring. That was sort of the vibe because they believe that Merkel will continue on for the next four years. Of course, the polls about to close any minute now in Germany. But let me also ask you, is there an impact or to what extent is the impact here to uh, 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 no matter who the chancellor is uh, for the German election? Well, I don't think there's going to be much of a difference because uh, Germany-India uh, relations were pretty much on an even keel even when uh, the previous chancellor, when there was an SPD government. But having said that, the CDU-CSU has been in power for much of uh, Germany's 68 years since uh, the end of the World War. So um, it, it's, it's, you know, it, there's not going to be much of a difference really uh, between the two parties.